and tell them, neighbor, let me encourage you today. Yes, Lord, while I encourage myself. Look at him and say, neighbor. The subject today is sticks and stones. Give me a minute, y'all sit down. Just give me a few minutes. Give me, yeah, let me make some sense. I'm probably a very unorthodox uh, preacher. Uh, 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 sort of sometime peculiar. Some people may think as strange. But I, 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 I thought about uh I thought about it as soon as Apostle uh, contacted me and we had a, a, a conversation and um, I had an opportunity to kind of see uh, where his view was, his focus. And um, I thought about the Constitution of the United States and how on um, September 17, 1787, it was about 23 of these men along with the president, George Washington, and they uh, came together as a people, came together as a people to try to bring um, the articles and uh, bylaws. And uh, it is really something that everywhere is conducive to structure and bylaws except the church. Uh, uh, but you realize that whenever you have more than two people, you got to have some kind of bylaw. That's right. You know what I'm saying? But, but if, if there if there are more if there are more than two people, then there ought to be some kind of order or some kind of order that would bring a perfect union. See, That's because. Right. We, we worship together, but we don't have no perfection in our union. We, we you know, we sing and we dance together, but, but we don't necessarily like each other. We don't really, you know, get along. We do well while we're, while we're in church to sort of tolerate each other. But the truth of the matter is most, most people outside of church don't, don't really have no dealings, not only dealings, but they don't really even care about the next individual, which is so much against who God is and so much against who Christ is. And so I'm thinking, if we the people as a body of Christ, then there ought to be something ignited on the inside of us that goes outside of church. If the only time you speak to me is when we're in church and other times you're talking about me, I think that that should be a reason uh, for us to at least have a conversation. Jesus. People disagree but dance together. Jesus. People disagree but 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 they speak in tongues. Jesus. And so is it just me or are we fabricated two-faced and backstabbing liars who just take opportunity to explore who God is where the truth of the matter is we don't care nothing about the church. Jesus. Jesus. You wonder, you wonder sometimes, wouldn't you rather for people just to tell you how they feel about you? Wouldn't you rather for people just to be straight up, say what you want to say? Look at somebody and say, go ahead and free yourself. If you, if you don't want me, then don't talk to me. Do you ever just want to think that people should free themselves so that we can come to church and not Spiritual jujitsu and karate in the service. Jesus. All I'm saying, can we just come together and have church? Well, I gotta fight through all the spirits. Why we gotta go through all of this unnecessary drama when the truth of the matter is we all came for the same reason? Yes. Services, church ought to be a no drama zone. That's right. This ain't the place to bring your drama. This is where I come for my deliverance. Somebody talk to me here. I ain't got time for no foolishness and no game. I need God right now, right here today. I need him at my house right now, right here today. I need him in my family right now, right here today. I ain't got time for the rest of this junk. Jesus. You wonder, you wonder sometimes, and 
Surely, particularly, I was concerned because it would be Peter that would be telling people what kind of chosen people we are, what kind of peculiar people we are. Anybody who's done any study on the Bible and any study on Peter know that nobody really, really believes anything that Peter says. <laughs> You know, Peter is the character who speaks out of both sides of, of his mouth. Whoever has the upper hand, then that's who Peter will kind of go with. And so you got to be particularly careful when you build in ministry. Because some people are with you, but they ain't really for you. They're with you. They're with you now, 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 now. They're faithful. They're faithful. They're there every service. You can depend on them, but they're not fruitful. Do I have any leaders in here that just want to pray to God and say, Lord, can you send some people that will be fruitful in this season? Okay, I ain't got nobody that needs help at the church. Yes, yes. I know what I hear God say. I said, is there anybody in here that will just lift their hands and say, Lord, can you please send fruitful people? Yes, send them, Lord. Yes, God. Send, send, Lord. Send somebody who would have the heart of the apostle, the heart of the pastor. Send somebody, Lord, who love you enough that'll work without a title, without a position. Send somebody, Lord, who won't vacillate in their commitment, in their level of dedication. One Sunday they come, they're vibrant, excited, they're exuberant. The next Sunday they come and you don't even know if they're saved or not. You're looking like you gotta be kidding. You're the same person that was running up and down the aisle. You're the same person that helped up service for 20 minutes last week. And now we can't get you to wave your hand. Yeah. Glory. 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 Woo. That people are more engaging in golf with titles and positions. And so is it our fault that we're guilty that we make people stuff that they will never have the ability to fulfill because we're trying to keep them encouraged? Can I tell you we're doing damage to the kingdom? Jesus. And we need to stop making people stuff because they are faithful. That's right. So Peter is the one who is writing and gives us the wonderful connotation and giving us an explanation of what it means to be a people. Oh man, Holy Spirit of God, help us. Help us that we would at some time or another understand and believe that what you do matters to me. How you look matters to me. Your success matters to me. Because I'm thinking if you're doing well, you make all of us look good. Do I have anybody here that's not a hater on anybody else? Anybody not jealous? Look at somebody and tell them, I can't wait to hear how God blesses you. Can't wait to hear. Can't wait to hear how the Lord blesses you. Wow! It would take Peter who would speak to those who are really rejects. How do you talk? How do you preach the re? How do you preach the rejects and make them feel royal? How do you preach the people who understand and recognize rejection because they've been rejected for so long? These people that Peter then describes in our text is not a people that have a church. They don't have a church because the temple was destroyed. Some of us wouldn't know what to do if we didn't have a building. Well, how many of y'all would testify? I can't let my I can't let my Christianity, I can't let my belief, I can't let what I love be held in the four corners of a wall of a building. That it's gotta be more than just a building. Somebody look at somebody else and tell them, you are the temple of the Lord. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the house of worship. I ain't got nobody here. seasons when we're just sticks we'll make it. Because you don't always feel like a stone. We particularly lie in church because it sounds so good in our wonderful testimonies when we talk about how much victory we have. Well the truth of the matter is some of us ain't had a victory in a long time. 
and you know before you leave here today, you need to take a victory at your house. You, you need to bust up in the house and say, I'm taking control over everything and everybody. Okay, y'all ain't got nothing. It's all right. Let me talk to somebody that really need it. Because see, we come in and we come with our fabricated faces and our fabricated praise. And we make everybody think that all is well. But the truth of the matter is, you need to leave here today with the victory. You need to take this right to your house. Shake your head up somebody tell them, I need to take this to the house. He's talking to those who have been rejected. It is nothing more gratifying, more satisfying, Pastor McCray, than to have people reject you. And then God blesses you. To have those who look on you as if you will never ever attain anything. They never have an expectation that you'll be great. They never, never meant for it to happen to you, even though these are the same people that prophesied to your life that God was going to bless you. And then as soon as God starts to bless you, it is these people that have the audacity to question why God did what he did. Three things and I'm done. They didn't mean it to be you. They meant it to be anybody but you. But do I have anybody here? I know they canceled you out. I know they overlooked you. I know they dismissed you. But how many of you believe that God has given it to bring you out of what people thought you were? I ain't got no help here. How many of y'all believe that God is getting ready to deliver you out of what people thought you were? What they said about you, what they thought about you. I wish I had somebody in here that'll lift your hand. You're going to wow your hand to lift it. Open it up. Somebody in here 